I'm Eugenia, I'm third year molecular and cellular biology, and I will be here talking to you about ovarian cancer metastasis and my summer internship, which I took place last summer. So ovarian cancer is the most lethal of all malignancies in the female reproductive tract, and it accounts for at least 4,100 deaths in the UK every year. And new case and 21 new cases are raised like every single day, accounting for a total of, uh, of 7,500 every year. Some of the symptoms of ovarian cancer include back pain, swollen tummy, tenderness in tummy, and also lack of appetite. These symptoms may be familiar, may sound familiar to you, because these are associated with a lot of other low risk conditions, and this is because these symptoms are non specific, which makes ovarian cancer very difficult to treat at early stages. On top of this, the lack of public awareness and information about ovarian cancer across the communities um, leads to the Alice information and also a poor diagnosis, which leads to a very late diagnosis of ovarian cancer across all patients. But how does cancer work? So this is a cell. The genetic material in the cells are into the nucleus. And for tissue renewal and tissue proliferation, cells divide. Cells divide like this, and they just split their genetic material into two. Cancer cells do the same, but the problem is that there's nothing, no, nothing that stops these cells from stop dividing, which leads sometimes to the accumulation of ab abnormal tissue into the tissues. And sometimes in later stages, like in your brain cancer, these cells into the tumors, they migrate to other tissues looking for other nutrients and energy to keep dividing. And sometimes they do this like through the, through the bloodstream. This afternoon, I will focus on the high-grade serous ovarian cancer, which is the most lethal and the most common of all ovarian cancers, and accounts for 60% of all ovarian cancers. It is thought that the ovary, it is thought that the tumor starts in the ovaries, but it can also start in the fallopian tubes right here, and sometimes in later stages, there's um, the cells from the primary tumor they migrate to the abdominal organs. But these cells do not migrate as easy I'm talking. They actually have to trespass a monolayer tissue that, that covers and protects all the abdominal organs, which is known as the peritoneal mesothelium. And actually, ovaries are almost side by side to this tissue. So ovarian tumor cells, they find it very, very easy to move and seed into this tissue to keep growing into the abdominal organs. But once these cells trespass this cavity, they trigger the production of a malignant abnormal built-up tissue, sorry, um, liquid, known as the ascites, which is rich in detached tumor cells and also different molecules which are secreted from mesothelium cells. So right here, this is the ascites, and this is the mesothelium cavity. It's all the tissue that covers all of this. So all of these molecules together and the mesothelium cells are thought to promote cell proliferation, but also tumor migration across all of these abdominal organs across the organism. So now that I have a, a little bit of background about ovarian uh, cancer, I will now focus on, my, on, on the project that I did during my, during my summer internship, and also some of the methods and some of the results that I've came across with. So um, during my project in summer, I basically um, focused on two main points. The first one would be to study the influence of this abdominal fluid into the cell migration of the cells towards the abdominal organs. And the second point would be to identify specific factors or molecules that are secreted within this fluid and that would then um, promote the cell migration towards these organs and tissues. So for the first point, we wanted to mimic the cell migration of cells from the ovaries towards these abdominal organs. So in order to do this, we used a transwell migration insert, where we inserted ovarian cancer cells on the upper chamber, and in the down chamber, we inserted conditioned media, which you don't know to, which you don't know, to uh, know this, but this conditioned media was obtained um, by incubating ascites, 
and then we remove with this media with a new media, and we incubate these mesothelium cells again with this media. So um, this is the media that we will use to this, to use the trans wall. And the curiosity about this trans wall migration insert is that it has a trans membrane, a trans wall membrane that allows cells to pass through it, mimicking the cell migration of cells. But they, like this membrane, doesn't allow, don't allow the um, the cells to go back to the upper chamber. So um, we also previously tagged these ovarian cancer cells with a green fluorescence. So we in, when we incubate them and we wash them, we would be able to visualize them under a confocal microscope and with very high quality. So these are the results that I got during my internship. So on the right hand side, you can see ovarian cancer cells that have been migrated through this membrane. But the media used here has been, or has been previously exposed to ascites while the, the left-hand side image is, again, ovarian cancer cells that have migrated through this membrane, but the media has not been exposed to ascites. So what we can see here is that the exposure of ascites increases the cell migration. But also, we use different time points for cell migration, and we found out that this is, seems to be time-dependent, as the greater time of exposure to ascites, the greater number of migrated cells. So for the second point, we wanted to um, identify specific molecules that were secreted by these mesothelium cells, covering all this cavity, and that would, that would potentially be involved in the cell migration of the cells. So we found out that CEMIP gene showed a very interesting information, and this information was also supported by other papers. So we chosen CEMIP for this experiment of all other molecules that we used during the, the internship. Um, so we amplify a mat genetic material of these proteins, and we've seen that under the exposure of ascites, there was an increase of the production of this protein, which makes us think that that this protein wouldn't be involved in the cell migration, and the exposure to ascites is increases. So we know that ovarian cancer cell is more complex than we could ever imagine. And we've seen that ascites promotes cell migration. And also there are some specific proteins and molecules that are secreted within this cavity by the mesothelium cells. So going back to the introduction, we've seen that ovarian tumor cells from the primary tumor, they would migrate towards this cavity and they will trigger the ascites, which will also seek which would also um, have the mesothelial cells, which would secrete this protein that would again increase the cell migration. So it feels like everything is interconnected and that there's like a feeding loop. Everything's interconnected, even though ovarian cancer is more complex than all of this. And just to finish up with the presentation, um, there's like an inspiring and motivating scientific community out there looking for new approaches for a new therapeutic of ovarian cancer in order to stop this cell migration and also eradicate all the tumors that have been spread across all ovarian cancer. Um, however, all of these approaches could have been avoided if we had a healthcare procedure that had a healthcare, a healthcare procedure that would prioritize diagnosis over treatment. So I believe that raising awareness and informing people about the different types of cancer is what would really benefit and make a real impact in the future of cancer therapeutics. These are some of the references that I used during my presentation. And this wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the DAAD program that found me this internship, and also my, um, my supervisor, and also the lab group in which I took place, and the different departments and different groups in which I also collaborated. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you.